the Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. From Mallory Square in Key West to the Governor's Mansion in Tallahassee and all points beyond, you're listening to the Florida Beer Podcast, powered by FloridaBeerBlog.com. Your source for all things related to the craft beer community in the Sunshine State. And now your host, Dave Butler. Welcome to another episode of the Florida Beer Podcast, powered by Florida Beer Media. This is Dave, your host and author, and we're going to start trying to get back to a little bit of sense of normalcy. We've got some great interviews with some great breweries from around the state that I've been dying to have you listen to, but... Well, the quarantine's just sort of getting in the way, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyways, if you are interested in more, you can find us at floridabeermedia.com. We're at floridabeerblog.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at floridabeerblog, or you can find us on Facebook at flbeerblog, where we host the Sunshine State Happy Hour every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we are also a proud member of the Florida Podcast Network, and I would recommend that you go on to Facebook and search for the Florida Podcast Network to get news about us and all the other great shows that are on the network. Later in the episode, we are going to be speaking to Rob Rabanya. He is the owner and proprietor of the Fat Tap Beer Bar and Restaurant in Oakland Park, Florida, not too, too terribly far from Funky Buddha. But when you take a look at his tap list, you're going to forget all about them and try some other absolutely fantastic beers from around the state. Some that I never thought we would actually be getting in South Florida. He's been hit just as hard as everybody else has with the coronavirus. And I kind of want to chat with him to understand a little bit on the beer bar side what he's had to do to survive and some plans that he has for the future. But first, we are actually going to go a little bit political. I know that many of you that are following the Beer Twitterverse and Blogosphere have been listening to conversations that handle opening and what breweries can and cannot do and the frustration with staying alive in such an uncertain economic time. Obviously, the most important voice that you have, other than going and supporting your local brewery, is to get out there and vote. And so we're going to try and reach out to some people that are currently in our state legislature or our candidates for office and understand a little bit about what they think of the current craft beer scene and things that they believe can help all the breweries that we are so fond of. First person that we have on the show is Heather Fitzenhagen. She is currently a member of the Florida House of Representatives for the Fort Myers Cape Coral area, and she is currently running for the Republican nomination for the Florida State Senate. So we were lucky enough to have her on the phone right before she had to enter another meeting to understand a little bit about her background her businesses that she's trying to fight to save, and a current conversation with the secretary for the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation, Halsey Bashirs, that she was actually a part of not too long ago. Enjoy. Like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing some interesting, slightly political things on the Florida Beer Podcast, and so many people have been asking me to find the pro-craft beer people to vote for in the general election coming up in November. And on the phone right now, we are very happy to have current state representative Heather Fitzenhagen. She is running for the Senate now for her native Southwest Florida. Heather, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your district because you have basically the Fort Myers Cape Coral area, which is a booming hotbed of craft beer here in the state, correct? It is. In this general area, we have about 35 craft breweries in the general vicinity, and that includes Cape Coral and out into the Bonita, Fort Myers area. So it's exciting because I think they've become a real community gathering point for a lot of people and i i love to see them small businesses are what keep our economy going 
And definitely small businesses like the breweries and tap rooms, like you've mentioned, are having a little bit of a struggle right now. We've been kind of taking a look at the news in terms of if they're allowed to open. There's been a lot of confusion and pushback on that. In terms of your personal opinions with our great craft breweries like Big Blue or Fort Myers Brewing and so on, what kind of things are you looking to push once you get into office and you are able to head back up to Tallahassee? Well, I mean, obviously, I think some of the most important things are to be able to plan ahead for what we could do better if we find ourselves in another situation like we have with COVID-19, because we were really caught unaware of what would happen in terms of bar shutting down, that it would have an impact on our craft breweries as well. And that really wasn't the intent, but the way everything is structured currently, it did cause a lot of problems. I think that's one thing I plan on doing. The other thing I really want to continue to take a look at is finding ways to allow our craft breweries to do more self-distribution, uh, because I think that is something that would really add to the bottom line and the health of the craft brewery industry. And finally, the most contentious one of all, and one that you know you have to strike a balance with truly, is franchise reform. I mean, we have obviously kind of a, a love-hate relationship sometimes with the beer distributing industry, because they can be extremely helpful on the one hand, but on the other hand, sometimes the relationship can go can go sour and then there are long-term contractual obligations that put small businesses in a bad place, certainly not in the driver's seat in that relationship. Yeah, and with franchise reform, for those listening that don't understand what that is, once a brewery enters into a contract with the distributor, only the distributor is allowed to back out. The brewery is not able to renegotiate or go to another distributor or so on, which I've spoken to several breweries. I don't know if you have, and they've said that it's very restrictive. Why do you think there are forces in Tallahassee that are trying to prevent a reform such as that, such as self-distribution? Well, I think there are a couple of things there. I think that there's the coming of age, if you will, of the craft brewery industry has been fairly recent in the big scheme of things, but we've had very long-standing relationships in Tallahassee with the distributors. So there's a lot of goodwill that has been built up over the years, and now we're, we're having to try to balance things out a little bit. I also think one of the other areas that makes it a little bit more difficult with the self-distribution and the relationship is the fact that as a legislature and myself as a Republican, one of the principles that we look to is not to to try to stay hands off in business relationships. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, government place is not to get in the middle of your contract between another entity, whatever that entity may be. So the right to contract, the right to negotiate, we want people to be able to do that and government really should not be involved. Having said that, we don't want to see situations where contracts become so onerous that they cause problems for fledgling industries like craft breweries that are trying to grow their their business. It's trying to find the right balance which is is really tricky to do. Absolutely. Now, one thing that I've noticed when I've talked to a lot of breweries is that we've got some municipalities, some regions that are very negative towards craft breweries that tend to make opening one and keeping it open very difficult through excessive legal loopholes and wrangling and just difficulties. And then there are some other places such as Tavares that are so positive towards the craft beer industry that they are going out of their way to try to attract these businesses in. You know, concerning the Fort Myers, Cape Coral area, how do you see craft breweries? Are you seeing them as sort of a positive for the community or is it sort of a difficulty? How do you kind of see the industry? Well, I think it's just an extension in a very positive way of all of Southwest Florida's dependence on hospitality as an industry. Hospitality and tourism is what drives the economy in Southwest Florida. 
And so I look at craft brewers as an extension of that that's very valuable. And not only is it for the tourism, but I really find that the craft breweries are a nexus for sort of like community pride and community activities. A lot of the different breweries do special events and host uh, fundraisers for different organizations. And I just think that they are playing a key role in bringing the community together. So I'm a big proponent of encouraging them. Absolutely. Very cool. Now, obviously, a lot of people that are pro craft beer, and you sort of mentioned that yourself, a lot of people that are very pro craft beer tend to be a little antagonistic towards the big distributors. And unfortunately, those distributors have very deep pockets that most craft breweries can't compete with. Do you see the distributors supporting candidates a lot? And is this something that you've been approached about as well? Well, obviously, the distributors are a big business and a big economic driver in the state of Florida. I have had a good relationship over the years uh, with my local distributors. But again, it's hard to strike the balance between wanting to support their business goals and their right contract with those of the craft brewery. And I don't think we're there yet. I think we still have to keep working on trying to find a way that both of these entities can can flourish and you know the relationship should not be one where either party is thinking the other is going to be damaging them i think it just grows the overall hospitality industry further and they both serve different audiences at different times so as far as my support i think that at the present time i am not supported by the distributors you know my opponent is but you know i think that I don't look out for who necessarily is writing me checks. I look to who am I serving, and I'm serving the people of Southwest Florida, and I'm serving all businesses, but small businesses are certainly the backbone of our economy here locally. Perfect. And one of the things that has been coming down in terms of support for small business in the state is a listening tour that is being conducted by the head of the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation, Halsey Bashirs. You were recently at a town hall, I guess you could call it, that was in Southwest Florida, correct? Yes, I was. And in fact, I am the fortunate beneficiary because when Secretary Bashirs left the legislature, I was able to take over as the chair of Business and Professions Committee for two years in the House and So Mm -hmm. I I feel that uh, he laid a lot of very positive groundwork in order to kind of get regulations out of the way of small businesses. And it was great to see him down here in Fort Myers. How did the conversation go? Were there a lot of breweries and brewery representatives there? And what were the kind of topics that were discussed? Well, there were definitely a cross section of brewers there. The one thing that I really took away from it that I appreciate, but I've known for a long time, is just the very straightforward way in which um, Secretary Bashir's operates. He's not one that he's going to promise you the moon and not deliver, but if he does make a promise to you, he does deliver on it. So I think his whole purpose was to come down, hear ideas about how we can get things back moving and back open to the fullest extent possible, but at the same time to, to manage the expectation that we're going to be able to flip the switch here in the next Mm -hmm. month and have everybody wide open. And, and that is not the case, unfortunately. However, you know, there are, were a lot of, you know, good ideas uh, talked about. And certainly one of the things that a lot of craft brewers have been able to do, not all, but some have been able to have a workaround with the closures by getting their food license or having a food truck on site being able to adapt their menu of beverages to include a lot of things that are not beer so that they've been able to kind of work around some of these problems in order to continue to stay open and continue to stay in business. And I will definitely promote one of the breweries that are in your region and momentum out of Bonita Springs. They are open as much as they can be for takeout. So definitely support the local businesses as much as you can. Yeah, Where can I people go to? Myers, they're, they're, all, they're all great. They're great people because these are family owned businesses and these are mm-hmm. hardworking people. And 
you know, they deserve our support. So I think, you know, every anytime you can get out and go and support them, please do it. Where can people find a little bit more information on your platform and your campaign? Sure. Just to uh, make sure everybody understands, I'm currently the state representative here in Fort Myers, and I'm running for the state Senate, which is a terrific opportunity. And you can get more information about the race and a little bit more about me at HeatherFitzenhagen.com. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming on the show, and we will keep an eye on everything that's going on in Southwest Florida. Terrific. Thank you for having me. We definitely want to thank Representative Fitzenhagen for coming on the show. If you have not had the chance to take a look at the people that are currently running for office in your area, It's something I definitely recommend you do. If you actually head to floridabeerblog.com, we published a lengthy article of a way to find the people that are currently representing you in Tallahassee, reach out to them, and another way to find the people that are currently running to represent you in Tallahassee and reach out to them as well. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and head to Oakland Park, like I promised earlier, in Fat Tap Beer Bar. If you've been following Florida Beer Blog on Instagram or Twitter, you've been noticing some of the pictures that I've been sending and a couple of articles that I've written about some of the beers they have on tap, which are absolutely phenomenal. So I was very happy that we were able to get the owner, Rob Romania, on the show. He has a lot of history with this location, building it up, creating a business, and then trying to steer that business the best way they can through such economic uncertainties. It's a phenomenal place, absolutely charming little location. Definitely recommend you go when you take a listen to this episode and find out everything that I've been telling you about. Enjoy. All right, Rob, welcome and thank you for coming on the show. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So give us a little bit of a rundown about Fat Tap, what people can sort of expect other than an absolutely incredible tap list when they go into your bar. So we came into the market after tons of research on the other side of the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, we, tra- <laughs> we, traveled, we traveled the U.S. quite a bit, and my wife and I. And, you know, at some point we figured out this is kind of what, what we wanted to do. I was in the uh, technology field and actually a teacher. And, you know, we wanted to bring that culture, the craftier culture that we saw you know, everywhere else. And I think it was, it was here in Miami, but I don't think it was in Broward. And we wanted to bring some of that craft beer culture into Broward. You know, unique beers, lots of regulars, everyone knows your name, that whole kind of feel, education on the beer, local support. And we, you know, just a a solid locals hangout where pretty much everyone understands that every time you walk in, it's going to be a new experience. The beers are going to, the beers are constantly rotating, food is rotating. You know, we're, the, the walls are changing. I mean, we're just we're just constantly doing something to keep it fresh. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because obviously with the beers, like I mentioned earlier, you are fairly close to Funky Buddha. And there's a lot of really great beer that's happening in the Broward area. But you managed to source some amazing breweries. I think unless you're really hardcore in a craft beer, you've got a tap right now from Hall Patter up in Lake City and Very few people really know who they are. Do you find that it's difficult to have to continually educate people that are coming in on some of these breweries that we know are phenomenal, but they may have completely never heard of in their life? Not really. I mean, believe it or not, I think people either we've we've done a good job in the year and a half that we've been open or or Mm -hmm. people are always open. Mm -hmm. They want to try something new. They don't want to have the same beer twice if they don't have to. I mean, that's just something that the market's been doing, you know, that you've seen a market trend where breweries have to come up with new beers weekly to keep their customers engaged. And that's kind of what we're doing. So we're bringing in those unique beers that these breweries are doing, and we take a risk. I mean, there, there's times that I've purchased beer where they weren't that great. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but there's times that, that we have found that they were, you know, that they're a hit and people love them. Now, you know, what we do is we really don't bring them back. I mean, uh, unless they are something that we sold out to through in a, in a day or two, 
we really don't bring back the same beer if we don't have to. Do you try to build relationships with some of the breweries? Because I know the last time I checked, you had a good number from Infinite up in Ocala. But they have a lot of new stuff that are coming out. Do you think that hopefully they'll be able to send kegs down just for you because of the support that you've given them as an example? You know, we hope. I have not been able to, to meet any of these guys in person and build a relationship, which that's what this, this industry is all about, is really a lot of relationships and support. Mm-hmm. Right now, we're in a situation where we're struggling to get fresh kegs. So we work with our distributors to make sure that you know, the kegs that we're getting are fresh kegs. So it's it's changed our tap list a little bit. You know, we normally don't have three beers from the same brewery unless it's something incredible or a tap takeover. But if it's fresh beer right now, we'll take it and we'll kind of, you know, and we'll go from there. So can list, we've been tearing it up with our cans and bottles. Tap list, we've been, you know, struggling to get fresh beer on tap. And that's something that I think consumers maybe not, you know, may not be aware of is the struggle right now that distributors and breweries have, you know, a lot of beers that are slowly going out of date and some beers are okay. And some beers you don't want that are three months old. Yeah. I definitely want to chat about that because you do serve food as well. So technically you are able to be open right now, but it's sort of what you mentioned. And I've heard a number of other people that are in the industry sort of mention that as well, that keg sales, draft sales, obviously took a very significant hit once the quarantine started, but the beer is still there. So with the industry and talking to a number of people that are in the industry, they've sort of issued that same concern that draft sales took a very significant hit. Keg sales are obviously down because very few places were open, especially in March and April, but the beer was still sitting there. And that is something that you mentioned that you don't want to put expired beer on tap. Is that something that a lot of tap rooms and restaurants, do you think they're going to be doing? Or is this something the consumer kind of needs to be aware of for the next couple of months? Well, you know, I hope, you know, I hope other businesses aren't doing that. I hope they're taking the customer into consideration and make sure they're trying to give them the best product as possible. You know, yeah, there, there's a lot of beer. Not, and, and I don't think anybody's selling expired beer, but I think it's it's beer that maybe is kind of almost out of code. So they're trying to move it a little quicker. Some, you know, some distributors are given discounts. You know, there's different things that our people are trying to do to these distributors and breweries are trying to move these beers. I hope everybody is uh, is trying to do the right thing, you know, for the consumer and for the brewer. I mean, I, I don't think the brewer is going to want a beer that, you know, he knows maybe the hops have fallen off, but they're still being poured. And, you know, somebody's review of that beer may not be the best because it's not the freshest. Mm. It is a struggle. It is a struggle. We're all going through the same struggle. We want to support, you know, we want to make sure that we get, you know, we help our distributors. We help our, our local breweries to move some of these beers. But at the same time, you know, I've got my reputation and my customers that I want to make sure that, you know, that we're doing the best for them. Okay. Are there some changes that the Florida craft beer community has been trying to push through legislative wise that you think as a taproom owner would benefit you as well? Because I know one of the things that everybody talks about is self-distribution and you're pretty close to a number of places that may not be able to get a keg to you, but is that something that you as a business owner would be interested in helping to promote? You know, I, I, I think so. I think some breweries would benefit from that. I think some other breweries wouldn't touch it. There could be some savings for the breweries, but at the same time, they're going to have to open up a whole new department. They're going to have to get transportation, delivery. So it's something that I think every brewery is going to have to, you know, look at it individually and see if it makes sense for them. The good thing is that they'll have the option. If it makes sense, they can do it. If it doesn't, they go back to, to the distribution model. For us, it could be a challenge. And the challenge could be that Rather than having seven or eight different distributors that we're purchasing from, we're now we're potentially having 14, 15, 20 different suppliers because we're dealing with individual breweries rather than dealing with a distributor. I think it could go either way. I think there's going to be good that's going to come out of it, and there's going to be some things maybe for us that'll be a little more challenging than what we're doing right now. Gotcha. Other than obviously keeping a tight look at the beers and whatnot, what sort of changes did you have to make once the quarantine prevention sort of was lifted a little bit and you were able to open up a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting. I think our biggest focus was uh, making people feel safe. We were very vocal as far as the things that we were doing. We were posting social media as far as our, you know, UV lighting and HVAC, you know, you know, AC vents. 
contract with one of our locals to come in and do some partitions for us that are pretty unique. They're not your typical partitions. People are, are, I like them. They don't feel that they're contained within an area. We implemented a clean bartender and dirty bartender. We wanted to make sure that, you know, we had a clean server that was actually uh, giving you your beer, giving you your, your, your food, pouring your beer, clean glasses. And then we have somebody that comes around and picks up the dirty glasses. So that way there's no cross contamination. Um, there's a lot of things that we had to look at to make sure that when somebody came in, they felt safe, which is, which I think is the ultimate goal. And obviously you've got a pretty supportive crowd. Have they been able to keep up that support, whether it be in person or takeaway? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we're we're really happy. We're we're limited, obviously, with fifty percent capacity, and mm-hmm. uh, actually, we don't we don't even hit fifty percent capacity because a lot of our capacity is at the bar, and our bar shut down, so we're limited to our tables. And there, you know, we're we're I think we're very fortunate with the support that we're getting right now. A lot of a lot of our you know a lot of our regulars, we're seeing a lot of new customers because we are a restaurant and we are craft beer focused. There's a lot of people coming in that you know for the first time. So it's nice to see new faces and it's nice to see, you know, old faces. You know, it, it, it's a struggle, but I got to say, I got to feel fortunate with, with the support. And what's interesting is that it's not obviously just their support for you, but you have instituted a weekly field trip between you and your regulars to one of the craft breweries in the area. How can you tell us a little bit more about that and how that got started? It was pretty simple. We looked at our numbers, what we were doing, you know, weekly, we're open, we were open six days a week, Tuesday through Sunday. We saw that Sunday just wasn't cutting it. And it's weird because I love to day drink on a Sunday, but <laughs> Sunday just wasn't doing it for us. And, you know, we decided to, you know, to close on Sundays. And I said, well, you know, how do I still stay engaged with my, with my regulars? I'm going to go out drinking anyway. I'm off now on Sundays. So we put the field trip together. And we basically are going out to, you know, local breweries and supporting them as a group. So our first, our first trip was a great success. We had 22 people show up to support Dangerous Minds in Pompano. We had a fantastic time. The brewery, brewery appreciated it. Our second one was uh, Barrel of Monks in Boca. Again, we had a really good turnout. We get to engage with our customers outside of the bar, which is cool. And, and, you know, just support local, which is what we want to do. Excellent. Lee, I know everybody's sort of hoping that in the next couple of minutes, the coronavirus will just disappear. That would be great. I know my daughter would absolutely love that. <laughs> assuming that it does or assuming that it doesn't, what are the next steps that you're sort of looking at for Fat Tap? One thing that the coronavirus has taught me is you take day by day. Outlook, yeah, we've, we've got a lot of plans, but we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. You know, we were shut down you know, from one day to the next, open from one day to the next. We were limited as far as when we can serve. So it, it's very tough to think about anything past tomorrow. We do have aspirations of, of maybe a larger location. Definitely, we are currently looking for a brewer. We are looking for brewing equipment. We want to, uh, we want to look into that space, potentially have two or three of our own beers on tap. I think the, the line between craft beer bar and and brewery is kind of fuzzy different than it was <laughs> maybe four years ago you know breweries are doing uh can releases just like you know craft beer bars were doing four years ago so i think it's, it's a good model for us to kind of look into bringing in some of our own beers and maybe turning into a brew pub and kind of looking at that we are definitely going to expand our bottle shop uh, right now, we currently have, I think we're up to 104 different bottles and oh, cans. Nice. They are not your typical, you know, bottles and cans that you're going to find at, you know, some of the big box stores. And that's something that we definitely love to, you know, to expand. It's been well received, well received. Perfect. Now, where is the best place for people to get information about Fat Tap and especially to take a look at your live tap list, which is mouthwatering to say the least? So fattapbeerbar.com, that's our website. It is powered by Untapped. So you can see everything live there. You'll see all our draft cans and bottles, food menu, wine menu, ciders, seltzers. It's all there. Or you can go to Untapped and follow us on Untapped. Untapped is a great little uh, tool for the uh, craft beer drinker. 
Perfect. Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on that and get some wings when I come down and get my next Crawler. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Rob. I really do appreciate it. And we'll have to make sure to visit again soon. Sounds great. Thanks for the opportunity. It is a phenomenal place and they have an almost insane and unattainable tap list, which is always great to see. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Florida Beer Podcast, powered by Florida Beer Media. Like I said, we are a proud member of the Florida Podcast Network. I would definitely recommend that you find them on Facebook. If you search FPN Insiders, you'll actually be able to find out a little bit more about all the other shows that are coming on the network and get some insider info and maybe some giveaways that I'll be hosting here in the next couple of months. You never know. But find them by going onto Facebook and searching FPN Insiders. Florida Beer Podcast is also a proud member of the Florida Beer Media Network, which comprises our live show every Wednesday at 6 p.m., Sunshine State Happy Hour, Florida Beer Blog, and we've got a couple of other podcasts on there. You can find us at floridabeermedia.com. Find us on Instagram and Twitter at Florida Beer Blog. We're on Facebook at FL Beer Blog. And if you enjoyed the show, and I hope you did, make sure to download and subscribe and rate us five stars on Apple and anywhere else. Make sure to tell your friends. Make sure to have a sign outside your polling place in the middle of August and another one in November telling them that whether you're Democrat or Republican, hopefully we can all agree that it's fine to just have a good Florida craft beer. We will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Drink Florida Craft. Your friends at the Florida Podcast Network want to use our platform to keep us all informed and connected. And while these conversations are greatly needed right now, and we hope they are helping you get through this trying time, we are podcast hosts, not experts in coronavirus or any other kind of medical issue. Please consult and follow the CDC's guidelines at cdc.gov. That's cdc.gov. Then please visit floridapodcastnetwork.com slash coronavirus for some additional resources and ways to connect to your local community. With social distancing being our call to arms, we need to feel more connected than ever. So by visiting floridapodcastnetwork.com slash coronavirus, you will help us all get through this with additional resources and ways to connect. Stay safe and healthy and wash those hands. Thank you so much for listening to our special coronavirus quarantine episode of the Florida Beer Podcast. We're going to try and get back to normal operation as soon as possible. In the meantime, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter. We're at Florida Beer Blog. We're on Facebook at FL Beer Blog or email us at FloridaBeerBlog at gmail.com. Florida Beer Podcast is a production of FloridaBeerBlog.com and of the Florida Podcast Network. Field producer is Steve Pacala, and our executive producer and grandpa Puba is Jemmy Lagonier. Find us, rate us, buy local, and stay indoors and keep yourself safe through this very, very confusing time. Drink Florida Craft.